Hello everyone, and welcome to my Efficient Design series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. In this episode, I want to bring a Kerbal to the lunar surface. I want to make a lunar landing. And uh, to start off, I want to point out something that I discovered, though I'm sure plenty of other people have discovered it before, uh, in the course of trying to create a good, elegant moon lander. Now, elegant means that what I really didn't want was I didn't want stuff sticking out. So, uh, let's say this was what I was trying to avoid. I did not like the idea of this sort of thing. I wanted to, uh, you know, have something streamlined. Unfortunately, we don't have long uh, 0.625 meter tanks and we don't have any 0.625 meter tanks that actually attach to the side of things. So that was uh, annoying. And the one alternative was to use these monopropellant engines, in which case I could use these roundified tanks, which is great. However, these aren't very efficient. Uh, they only have a ISP of 290. And also these roundified tanks and this RCS fuel tank uh, have a very high mass, an empty mass, um, uh, compared to the normal tanks. So they're very heavy. So not very efficient situation at all. So, uh, in the midst of all this frustration, I accidentally uh, noticed something happening. And let me just verify that uh, part clipping is not on. So, there you are. And what I'm sure everybody else has figured out, but I only just figured out, was that this sort of thing is possible. Hold on. Eek. Like that. It takes a little bit of fiddling, but you know I've I've uh, done such uh, magic before. Well, I can't. Well, I guess I can show it now. For instance, with uh, with these parts, you can attach a lot of engines to the bottom, like so. So you know uh, legal part clipping, and so I, I'm going to be using this sort of legal part clipping in my in my lander design because otherwise I'm gonna have tanks sticking out. otherwise I'll, I'll I mean it, it's very simple either I do that or I have uh, this sort of situation in terms of mass in terms of performance there's no difference it's just a matter of looks so anyway uh, let me bring up my moon lander and we can uh, see whether we can get to the moon so here we are and you can see the the situation at work that allows me to get these tanks on and so obviously if I had them sticking out it'd look really ugly but uh, here it looks a little bit better and that's the only net effect um, the engine I've chosen for this is this Rockamax uh, 487S and that's because of its efficiency and also the fact that it's very cheap notice the cost is only 300 um, that's cheaper than even these little LV-1Rs. I mean, two LV-1Rs uh, costs more than... Uh, I mean, uh, uh, two of these Rockamax uh, 48-7Ss costs less than this one LV-1R. And you need at least uh, two of those because otherwise they're not balanced. Um, these are more expensive, more expensive, way more expensive, right? Uh, this is only a slightly more expensive, but you wonder why so yeah natural choice in terms of uh, affordability and also because the thrust is more than sufficient for the moon uh, to do all our business so that's good I, I hope these fuel tanks feed in properly I hope they don't explode we're gonna have to worry about our Kerbal as far as uh, his safety in this whole thing oh I just remembered I should action group the solar panels let's do that Okay, uh, only one parachute. That'll save a little bit of mass. Uh, I think this should be more than enough considering uh, it's usually meant for this command pod and this command pod has a mass of four tons. Uh, this whole assemblage has a mass of uh, six tons when full, but only two tons when empty. So it'll be fine. Uh, we're using the same uh, launch system that we used for the Duna flyby mission, except I've dumped the solid fuel boosters I don't know if this is gonna be enough. It's probably not. Um, so it's gotta go suborbital, and then we'll have to just retrieve it like that. Uh, no, 
No way to uh, get into full orbit first and then bring it down to the KSC, I think. I hesitated, uh, well, okay, I actually tried, you know, doing stuff like, uh, like this and uh, to give it a boost and but if I'm gonna have all of it be reusable I'm gonna have to carry these back down and these weigh a lot so and I tried to replace this engine with four or even five of these or these and regardless of how I did it adding more fuel to the stack because uh, four or five of these produce more thrust um, it, it just wasn't happy it was not a good situation so so yeah, I think I'm going to have to pass on trying to add fuel to this. And so this will probably stay suborbital. We'll do some more tests and see if we can't get this a little bit more optimized and uh, see what kind of engine I should add to it in order to make sure that it gets into full orbit and then retrieve it. But for now, we'll go with this. The, the solid fuel booster idea was clearly not a good one. All right. Uh, so yeah, this is what we're going to take up. There is a reasonable probability that our Kerbal is going to uh, meet some demise. So let's let's get a new Kerbal. Hold on a sec. Let's let's go out. Let's get a new Kerbal. We've already got the contract to land on the moon, so we don't have to look at that. So yeah, uh, astronaut complex. Now naturally, this is an extremely daring mission, and and a difficult one. Bilfert Kerman. Well, I don't know. Uh, Corlo has high degree of stupidity and a reasonable amount of courage. Bilfert has slightly less stupidity, plenty of courage. Richmore Kerman has very low stupidity and very high courage. Well, maybe maybe uh, it's better if uh, the Kerbal goes in knowing what's going on, but uh, is still willing to give it a try. So let's let's hire Richmore for this uh, this particular gig. Alright, so he might be the first Kerbal to land on the moon in this series. Uh, we shall see. So uh, I'm just going to go directly to launch, plat launch pad with the rocket and we'll see what happens. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to time warp to daylight. It's uh, tough remembering the steps of time warp uh, between... Because uh, in Realism Overhaul the time warp steps are different. And so I have to re-get used to all that. You'll notice I also removed the 4.5 uh, ton tank that was actually at the top of the stack. And that's to relieve some of the mass issues with this engine. Uh, which was why I had to use the solid fuel boosters on the side because it was a little bit too massive. Alright, um, we've got electric charge, we've got solar panels even, so that's good. Uh, we even have landing lights, so all provision there. Uh, in this version uh, Kerbals do not need food. So okay. I don't need the parachute and uh, these are the decouplers that are extending the lander legs so no need to complicate things there. Alright Richmore let's uh, let's get going. Excellent. Gear up. So the key thing is the ISP. Uh, I need an average ISP above 345 minimum. Uh, it starts out as you can see at 320 on the surface and eventually gets up to 370. Uh, so I've I split the difference but actually the rocket spends a lot of time uh, in you know in this first phase of flight. So the the higher the uh, the quicker we get to high altitude the better in terms of whether we can get this thing well reasonably close to orbit so we can detach and do all our business safely remember we uh, we have to get the lunar lander to orbit first and then bring this all back down so we need the time to do that the lander has pretty tight margins as you might expect from practically everything else I do um, so we'll have to see. I mean, it really depends on how well I do my landing, which is never a thing that I do very easily. <laughs> so.
No little suicide burn countdown here. No mech jeb to help out with the timing of it. Just gotta wing it. On the bright side, the lander does have a pretty high thrust for itself. It's got a 0.5 thrust to weight ratio, which is good. I mean, and that's initially. Once it's empty, it's got way more than that. But um, that's pretty good. Just turning very gently here. Probably need to turn a little bit faster. I just hesitate to do such things, but... Okay, this should be fine. So we're approaching 370 on the ISP now. Let me try and get my orbit uh, pretty, pretty tight here. So we don't waste anything. Well, that's pretty much it for this. Alright, uh, let's decouple. Alright, and activate this engine. And yeah, I think it can go for orbit now. Okay. Alright, so that's taken care of. This little guy's in orbit. Let's see about the other portion of this. Hello, I just realized that I've been chattering away and I failed to press record after, after uh, bringing this back down. All I did was a straight retro burn to bring it down as closely as possible. Um, so yeah, it looks like we're landing on land. I did a whole long spiel about my uh, different ways to fix this up properly, and uh, you didn't hear any of that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we'll talk more about this uh, this some other time, I guess, uh, when when I actually remember to press record when I talk about it. But yeah, uh, well, I guess on the way down here, I, I've thought about a lot of ways to... Uh, get this so that I could uh, reach orbit but there are a lot of complications because this is a very already a very low thrust to weight uh, very high thrust to weight ratio engine uh, they reduced the mass of it the mass used to be around uh, four tons now it's three so it's got a great performance and uh, and that means that pretty much anything I try to add to this actually reduces the performance of it so if I try to put LV uh, T30s or T45s on the side with the little pods of more fuel it doesn't work out. I can't just add more fuel to the stack because uh, then this engine can't lift it. Uh, and that's why I had used the solid fuel boosters in the first place. And of course I'm under the requirement to uh, make everything reusable so we need to bring it all back so I couldn't just uh, dump stuff. So yeah, lots of complications of trying to get this uh, to the performance that I actually want uh, which is to get it into orbit and yeah I I spent a lot of time on that but unfortunately it didn't get recorded oh oh what did we lose I'll reach our rechargeable battery pack I hope those aren't too expensive okay let's recover vessel okay obviously zero signs from that part um, we got it uh, to 60.3 percent so D minus almost an F uh, but at least we didn't land it all the way around the, the planet from the KSC. So yeah, that's good. I mean, well, at least that's as uh, good as I was expecting from that in this case because we weren't getting into orbit. Alright, let's uh, deal with our more important part, the actual mission. Now the tough thing is I don't actually know after that little orbital burn whether Richmore actually has enough fuel to completely uh, succeed in this mission. But we're going to find out practically, instead of me calculating it. I could calculate it all out now and uh, find out, but that's not quite as much fun. And I want to land him without any uh, any sort of regrets ahead of time. We will put him on a... Let's see, actually uh, we should uh, uh, give some consideration to 
what would be the most efficient thing. Um, the, the free return doesn't necessarily imply efficiency. It's just safety, right? Uh, okay, that seems like it'd be pretty good. 25 kilometers in periapsis around the moon. Not really uh, an easy return, but it doesn't matter. We are going to uh, go with that. Now our thrust to weight ratio on this is about 0.5 right now. Could figure it out how long it'll take actually, but uh, I'm just going to estimate probably uh, two minutes or so. Uh, so let's start here. Uh, well, actually this is a pretty bad angle. I don't like it more than 10 degrees. Let's wait a little bit. Uh, just a little bit more. Okay, let's try it now. Uh, probably I was right the first time. Getting some sunlight here. Not really impressing need of electric charge, but I'll extend the panels on en route to the moon. Ah. Uh, so uh, the, these these other tanks aren't feeding into the this tank, otherwise we wouldn't have uh, the fuel looking like that. Okay. Well, once we run out, I'm gonna have to transfer fuel manually. I hope that works. How close are we? Okay. Actually, it's probably better to do what we planned in the first place. Okay, that's good enough. Alright, so that is our trajectory to the moon. Now, let's talk about uh, the fuel. So... Before we get him over there, we should uh, check that this transfer works. Yes, it does. Okay, so that tank is empty, so we have to empty this one. And that's fine, you know, uh, manually transferring fuel as long as you have the time to do it, it saves on the cost of the fuel lines. So, uh, let us extend those solar panels. Action group has been pressed. Ooh, I, I guess I didn't do that properly. Alright, well. Or maybe I didn't save it. Yeah, that's that's a possibility. Okay. We continue. Okay, so uh Mooner Sphere of Influence. We're going to get into orbit. No point keeping it loose. Okay, that will be fine. So, 257. Not bad. I think we can retract the solar panels now and then we'll approach to our periapsis for the burn. And then comes the tough part. If I can make a landing efficiently, then Richmore gets to go back home. If I can't, then things get a little bit more difficult. We've already done a lot of the EV reports, probably most of them. Not all of them, but most of them. And probably the ones that are left are 
in non-equatorial regions, so we're not going to do any of that. We're going to go straight for landing. And let's start that out. Oh, a little bit too soon. Okay, now. Okay, that's good enough. Uh, we should try and figure out how to make a landing now. Um, this looks barely lit here, but I think that's the crater I want to go for. So we're going to... not that far. Can't have burn like that. Maybe a little bit higher for safety's sake. Okay. And then if it's too dark, we'll uh, just land out here somewhere, but I think it'll be alright. Okay, so... Ah, Kerbin Rise. We did not carry any instruments, you might have noticed. And that's because we'll do all the science in a separate mission. The mass of the pod is really uh, reasonably high. I mean, it's not uh, com anything compared to the command pod. The command pod is heavier, but I would rather carry the Science Junior goo containers and the other scientific instruments on a separate mission for the sake of mass and simplicity as well. Uh, just as we're going to do with Duna, we'll make a separate mission with all the science. Uh, we did the flyby with just uh, Kerbal and maybe some thermometers, and we'll follow up with the science afterwards, especially once we've unlocked some more of the instruments like the Gravioli. Hopefully with this mission we will get, the, get all the scientific instruments unlocked. So, yep. Alright, it uh, looks like we're on a decent uh, descent insertion trajectory, something like that. So... We continue. Okay, I think we can start stuff out now. Oh, we're, we're, we've got a lot of thrust. We do not need to rush. Probably pick a spot around here. Just gliding in. Tough terrain, but uh, on a small scale it should be alright. Let's get the lights on. They're landing lights, so we can't see much of them right now. Hmm, there's this crater in the way right there. I want to pass that. No, no, wait, maybe we'll, we'll land short of that instead. Looking for landing lights. Ah, right, there they are. Okay, that's us down. Ooh, and uh, and the crew hatch happens to be on the lit side. That's always good. Okay, so yeah. Uh, before I forget, let me transfer the fuel to the center here. No good having uh, it on the outside where the engine can't get on it. Get to it.
that also ensures that it's a little bit more stable just in case Richmore knocks into it crew report 20 points only east far side crater well, we'll just keep that we don't have an antenna uh, you'll notice no ladder and that's because I still haven't unlocked them yet so Richmore is just gonna have to let go and flop which is perfectly all right okay Richmore plant the flag They need more rousing music if you actually make a moon landing. Uh, no, no, but we want a specific location. Far side crater. Uh, oh, I know. Okay, first reusable. Hey, 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 hey. Reusable moon landing, and that's true. That's it is the first time I've bothered to do a fully reusable attempt at a moon landing, so that's good. Uh, this crater seems to have been a really nasty impact. Samples are heavier than normal. Okay, we'll keep that surface sample, and he looks small when looking up at the sky for Kerbin. Okay, keep that data. Now he's gonna need to EVA, well, his, what we call it, use his EVA pack in order to get up to the thing, and you know how much fun I have with that. Okay, looks like he's sort of grabbed on there. Oh, okay, that wasn't much of a grab. Try again, Richmore. Okay, now board. All right, got that. That's all we came here to do. So let's see if we can get back home. Got all the fuel in the center. It's good. All right, I don't see any impediment to starting off. We're going to head uh, nine degrees, so that's gonna be tilting that ways. All right. keep the lights on I think they don't seem to be drawing much electric well we've got the always open solar panels here so I guess that's enough could probably coast to apoapsis already uh, yeah we'll create a maneuver Ah, good looking lunar surface there. A little bit of glinty stuff. Don't know what exactly that's about. Why does Richmore look worried? Uh, I can never figure out Ker Kerbal psychology. Okay, I think we can start burning now. Now, trying to get Richmore close to the KSC is not going to be easy. Well, I haven't uh, got enough fuel to get him into orbit around Kerbin, though we could probably aero capture around Kerbin. But after that, I don't know if I have enough margin to do uh, re-entry burn. You can see the fuel situation here right now. Well, that'll get us down. Let's see. The they're saying seven hours, right? It's in the dark again. If the KSC was like right there, that'd be nice. Let me focus on Kerbin for a sec here. Where is the KSC? KSC is here. Okay, KSC is there 
So it's about three hours here. Three hours. Three hours. So nine hours. I mean, so it goes, it'll be like right here when we hit periapsis right now. Somewhere around here. So not all that close at all. Probably close to the opposite side of the planet. But what can we do, really? I don't think I have enough Delta V to do anything better. Oh, well, I guess we could hang out in orbit around the moon, right? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, let's hang out in orbit around the moon. So, focus back on the moon. How long is our orbit? 25 so uh, 50 minute orbit so let's let's go around twice this is just all hypothetical I'm, I'm just thinking it through and hoping for the best and also hoping that we don't crash into anything along the way here uh oh electric charge is diminishing let's get some well it's on the dark side so I guess that will happen but we can turn off the lights wanted to definitely capture me so let's go like that seven hours and eleven minutes I don't know on focus on Kerbin just can't see exactly where things are and I don't remember the geography of Kerbin that well. Okay. Well, let's try this. Let's see where we are. We are. Okay. Let's aim for that. I think that should be good enough to f bring us down. Otherwise, we're going to be in a bit of trouble. Uh, more fuel than I thought we had left, so... No, I don't want to focus on Kerbin. Uh, can we focus on me again? Uh, not the moon. Not to be too self-centered, but come on. Alright, uh, 2.31. Calculator out. 2.31 and that looks like about a half ton of fuel uh, one ton is uh, 90 units of liquid fuel so if you use that as a gauge uh, we're a little bit short of half a ton so let's say 1.85 dry just to be conservative about it 700 delta V 762 that is pretty good. That could probably get us into decent orbit, actually. But let, let's see my original plan, which was to uh, hit the KSC. Well, hit the general vicinity of the KSC. Okay, so here's the situation. We see that the KSC is here now, and our periapsis is in five hours. So if you figure it, I think we're going to be coming pretty close. So that's my hope. And it looks like we're right right along the Terminator. So not easy to tell whether we're going to be in the dark or nice and bright. If we're nice and bright, I could use the fuel that we have here to try and make some sort of landing. We'll see. Looking at our approach now in 17 minutes and we are over the Korean shaped continent at least a periapsis is right now maybe I want to lift my periapsis just a little bit so that we're not forced down especially since I now know I have a little bit more fuel than I thought it would Maybe around there will be fine. 
just uh, just trying things out here. So I'm going to 30 kilometers here. Can't really see exactly where the KSC is. We're we're landing in the water next to it though. Fortunately, unfortunately, the KSC is in the dark, so trying to make a accurate landing is difficult. Sunrise again. We left on the sunrise and we returned on the sunrise. Richmore is liking the situation, and I tend to agree with him. The parachute should be uh, good enough to hold us even with the tanks at the east levels, so that's good. Periaps is dropping. Yeah, we're going to come in directly. Would have needed to be higher for a orbit. Now, since we're doing that, it is to my benefit to retroburn here. So that we don't uh, go further than we need to. Ah, well, we're landing short of that continent, so it doesn't look like we're going to make a surface landing. I know. Uh, a touchdown on land, so we're going to have to hit the water again. Maybe safer, considering the way we've been going. This is probably going to be some kind of B, maybe. I mean, maybe uh, if we could have done half an orbit of the moon in addition to what we did, it would be a little bit closer. But since you can only do an integer number of orbits before, before departure, because your departure point is a definite point on the orbit, I uh, couldn't, really, couldn't really finagle that. Okay, uh, as usual, gear down to cushion the... Well, you know, actually, come to think of it, this engine is actually cheaper than the landing gear, isn't it? <laughs> so I don't know what the priority should be in this case, but I, I tend to think that uh, the engine should cost a lot more than they actually do, or or all the other parts should cost commensurately less, and it should be rebalanced that way, but, but that's just me. Uh, we're still in orbit. Uh, Okay, shoot is fully open. Richmore Kerman has uh, become the first Kerbal in this series to land on the moon and now is the first to return safely. Assuming nothing untoward happens at this point. Uh, they always tip over. At least that's realistic, but nothing fell off this time. All right, recovering vessel. And there you have it, a fully reusable attempt at the moon. We lost uh, we lost that uh, one battery pack. <laughs> uh, that's that's pretty good, losing one battery pack. So I uh, got the extra points for recovery of vessel from the surface. Um, total funds from uh, this recovered is uh, 6,566, uh, a B. Okay, a B on the retrieval. Richmore came back, only 1.9 reputation for that. Uh, let's see, I, I've lost track of all the... Uh, so we, we got the whole uh, moon mission done. So that's all done now. Uh, we've still got Ike, Duna. Uh, we've already done everything to do with Minna. So, um, so yeah, there we go. We need to do Ike and Duna. So uh, look forward next time as I try and figure out how to make this current vessel a little bit more robust maybe we'll be able to get something over to Ike or Duna to land on them uh, probably Ike would be the easier one right uh, though uh, Duna does help by aero braking uh, so uh, that is a consideration but uh, getting back up is a little bit difficult so we might want to aero capture around Duna uh, and then actually land on Ike uh, yeah Alright, so that's that's that'll be the plan. 
But uh, thank you for watching this successful mission to the moon, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.